I will be able, how do I say, I'll be able to help people at a greater level because of all the pain and all the sacrifice and all the hardship that I experienced because now I can help them because I am them. I was never them. And now that I am, and I see it from a different perspective, and I think a little differently now, and I move obviously differently. Mm -hmm. And so this happening, even though it was so bad and it, it hit me like a brick, mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna use it for the good. Welcome to The Right to Inspire. Journalist and host Sarah Strackhouse has worked at Fox News, The CW, CBS, NBC, and Time Warner cable stations across the country for more than 10 years and is now focused on telling inspiring stories of those dedicated to making change. She's driving the message home that ultimately you have the right, the freedom, and the power to be the change you want to see in the world. You have the right to inspire. Yes, thank you so much for joining us. I'm so excited to introduce you to our guest. She really is one of the greats, an absolute legend in the fitness industry. Donna Richardson, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me, Sarah. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, I wanted to kind of read through your bio, but it's so incredible. You've done so much. So I'm going to try to hit some highlights, okay. although the entire thing truly is a highlight. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much more to do, though. I know. <laughs> well, you're a best-selling author, international motivational speaker, Speaker, TV host. Um, I mean, you've been on the President's Council for Fitness, Sports, and Nutrition. Yes. When it, the Bush administration, the Obama administration, yes. I know you were ap asked by the Trump administration. Yes. And if I, yes. maybe presumptuous, yes. I don't know, but probably going to be asked by the Biden administration. Yes. Um, <laughs> you know, you're the owner of of Mama Laverne's Chicken and Waffles. And we'll get to that. Okay. But I want to kind of go through also your fitness journey. Because yes. you That's how I started. so much. Yeah. I mean, you were the TV host of ESPN's Fitness Pro Show. Mm -hmm. uh, that was the had, first health and fitness show ESPN ever had. I mean, yeah. that's huge to be a part of that. That yeah. must have been so exciting. That was when the Sports Center just started. That When oh they first gosh. started that show. Like the you know? OG ESPN girl. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then I think the other like big break was Buns of Steel. And I was just about to say, that was a huge fitness video. I mean, I think Oprah named you one of the top five fitness, well, yes, I think top, top five. five fitness video instructors. Yes. I mean, that's a pretty big deal. Well, at that time, <laughs> Buns of Steel was really popular and, you know, everybody's working out because you had the Jane Fonda tape. So thank God for her yeah. <laughs> because she opened up the opportunity for people like myself and others. And that tape sold like over 10 million copies of wow. Buns of Steel. But I wasn't in the first Buns of Steel. I was in the platinum buns of steel. Uh, the, the higher, I don't know what that the, means, yes. but... <laughs> I mean, I, I like it. I would rather be platinum, yeah. right? <laughs> but now, you know, you know, reality says that, yes, I started humble background, mm -hmm. you know, but now instead of buns of steel, I have buns of AARP. And it's all good. Right. <laughs> Well, I, I, we have so much to get to, but I really yes. want to start out with kind of in your bio, you talk a little bit about how you got into fitness, Yes, um, that you were tired of seeing a trend in your community. Yes. And I think that is a lot of times what kind of pushes people to make that change. I mean, the mm -hmm. show is all about um, taking your freedom, your power, your, your the right to make the change that you want to see in the world. Yes. The people who are dedicated to change. And I think you are embody that completely because not only have you done that in the fitness industry, right. uh, but you've also then taken that and in this whole pandemic, right. you've done something incredible. Here it says that you you saw people passing away in oh, your community yes. and your church and you wanted to make that change and kind of get that focus on health. And I think that is so important, especially when it comes to our country and society. I right. mean, everyone's been cooped up for a year, right? Yes. You know, uh, that focus on physical health is so important, especially when it comes to our mental health. And right. I think that's something you're such a huge advocate for. Oh, yes. You can't do the physical and not have, in my opinion, the mental and the spiritual piece a part of that. And so, yes, I was out traveling the world, 50 states, 50 countries, six continents, helping people. But every time I came back, I would go to a church and the sick and shut in list would be really long or in the community, they would say so-and-so has passed away or even in my family. You know, there were a lot of times I'd come back and I'd have to go to the hospital and visit with family members. And I just became so sick and tired of seeing so many loved ones and people that are in the church and the community. A lot of them were passing away from preventable illnesses. Mm. And that's really how my business started because I said, wow, how can I 
make a difference? How can I use my gifts and my talents that God has given me and help those? Mm -hmm. And so that's how I started. <laughs> and by wanting to spread that positivity, now you have a Nike shoe named yeah. after you. Have, Years you've done later, all these wonderful things. <laughs> Years but it later, started yes. with that kernel, and you just kept spreading that. So that is right. incredible. And on top of that, I know that you said that when the pandemic actually hit, everything mm -hmm. kind of came to a screeching halt. Which yes, it did. I think many, many people experienced that. A lot of people were struggling financially, struggling yes. with their businesses. I was one of them because everything them. shut down. Like I'm a speaker, I host, yeah. so I couldn't do these events anymore. But I had already, in my mind, started thinking, what do I do with my mom's recipe? Well, and I love that you didn't let yourself be a victim. Oh, no. You decided no, no, to no. take control. You can't. So tell us about, tell us about you that. You can't. No, 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 no. <laughs> you, you know, for me and helping people, it's always been, yes, I want it to get you healthy, but it has to be mind, body, and spirit. And nothing will change. I can't give you a recipe or an exercise or, you know, scripture. It starts here. Until you change your mind stuff, mindset, nothing else will change, even physically. If I want to give you an exercise prescription, well, your mind has to tell your body to move, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, you sound incredible and so confident. Were there ever times that you were afraid or nervous? Oh, yes, always. Anytime I go and speak, you know, <laughs> I'm like a I little nervous natural, because yeah. I can be speaking at a church one day and then I'm speaking with kids at a boys and girls club or I'm at the White House, you know, mm -hmm. being a part of the President's Council. And, you know, I remember going on tour with First Lady Michelle Obama, and we were helping kids to start gardens. Yeah. So it's such a range of people that you can inspire. So I wrote that book, To Exercise Your Right to Healthy Mind and Body. And then I followed up with Being a Witness to Fitness. Mm -hmm. And that's a little deeper because it's saying, I tried to help people see that this is something that, it has to be a priority. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't have all these other things if you don't have your health. Yeah. And so I coach people to have a covenant with themselves, but also the covenant with God. Mm. Because now there's a certain kind of obedience that happens when you're committed to your faith, but also the faith in yourself. And so people, I think, when it comes to having that right mindset, having this covenant, there's a level of obedience, but they become more intentional about their actions. Mm -hmm. And I will always say this, you cannot conquer what you're not committed to moving forward. And so that goes back to just changing your thinking. I remember um, one time my pastor said, you must eat from the garden of your own thoughts. So don't Ooh. grow anything you don't want to eat. <laughs> and I was like, preach. That gives me the shivers. <laughs> because yeah. that could be used anytime yeah. and anywhere, you mm -hmm. know? Absolutely. And it's all about that, that narrative. Yeah. You know, you have to change your self-talk. And even looking in the mirror and how you see in yourself, that's different from how people see you. Mm -hmm. And then you talked about change. Yes, all of us have to change at some point, but we resist change. You know, we resist coming from that place of comfort and, mm -hmm. you know, feeling safe. But that pandemic changed everything. I was about to say, you made a hard pivot. So oh tell me gosh. about Mama Laverne's. Mama Laverne. So we've been <laughs> doing this for over 25 years. It's the love of cooking and seeing the joy of people having good food and fellowship and fun. And we just go to people's homes and it'd be parties and graduations and celebrations. And when I moved to Dallas... My former husband was a um, very well-known DJ. And so when different artists came into town, they go, oh, we're going to come over after we do an interview, after we do the concert. You had some big names, and too, right? And we want right? Mama Laverne's Chicken and Waffles. Yeah, like Stevie Wonder, maybe, and Casual. Aretha Franklin, and Charlie Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just to name a few. Just to name a few. <laughs> so, um, you know, that's how we started. And my mother and I would just show up, and they would go, okay, and we... We would actually do everything. We'd bring the food, we'd cook it, prepare it. And now when you have good food like that, you're just like, ex you know, sitting back, chilling, or you may want to play cards, or you may want to get up and dance. But it, it made you get in a certain move. It's experience. And so how we started was at my grandmother's table. Mm -hmm. Because after church, we'd all go to my grandmother's house, and we'd have brunch, and we'd have this great soul food, right? Yep. And so when my grandmother passed away, my mother took the baton and said, okay, we're going to gather here. And by that time, she had put a little love and a twist into this chicken and waffles. Mm -hmm. And it just became really, really popular. And in her words, 
she felt that she was just blessing people in a way that used her talent and it was through cooking. But what's so interesting about her saying that is that when she cooks, she like, dances. She sneaks a few <laughs> dance moves in and then she goes Got back and cooks. <laughs> oh yeah. And my mother is what, 81 now? But wow. she can outdance all my friends. I was going to say, I saw her what, a couple years weeks old. ago. She yes. did not look 81. 81. She did not. And she dances. And you know how- Keeps her young. Thank you. And she says, I'm going to keep dancing until I can't dance anymore. Oh, so God. she's dancing and she's cooking. And there's this dance. They say, drop it like it's hot. Uh huh. Well, my mom doesn't do that. She twists down and then she twists back up. And they go, oh my God, your mama's dropping it like it's hot. And she goes, oh, no, no, no. I'm dipping it for Jesus. I that said, well, so cute. that my mama dip that. for Jesus <laughs> and that you have some yummy, we call it delicious homemade chicken and waffles and pancakes. But, you know, this to me is the most amazing and the most um, important. And even like when I think about purposeful, mm. because all those products I did before, I'm just so humble just because I had the opportunity to do it. But this is my mom and I. Mm. She wrote it down on a piece of scrap paper, took a photo of it. Like, you could have emailed me, Mom. She's old school. <laughs> and and she took a photo of it and texted it to me. And that's when we were like, wow, we should think about this as a product. But it just didn't start yet. So during the pandemic, we couldn't go to anyone's home, yeah. right? So I started just mixing up and putting it in a Ziploc and mailing it out to people. And then people were like, well, I want to come and... Get and now, the product. Well, and, and they would come by and I call it a love drive by. I have some love at your doorstep. And I would do the love drive by or they would come and do it. So we, it was all about believing, mm -hmm. like believing in God, but believing in ourselves because we'd never done this before. We were stepping out on faith. I had no income last year. And my mother kept saying, we're going to do this. And I remember being at someone's house right as the pandemic hit. And I was in their pantry looking for something, and they had this pancake waffle mix. We won't say the name, but it was just add water. And we're mm -hmm. like, I was like, how can that be good? And she's like, oh, it's not. We don't have your mother's. And I went, and I do know. Noted. God woke me up every night for the, like three or four days, and I went, I never thought of it as a product, but mm -hmm. I did, but didn't see the vision that he had. And the well, pandemic. And now you're about to be in grocery stores across yes, the country. I, we I mean, just now launched. You're, you're huge. You're <laughs> we huge. Know, you're well, on we're Amazon. Getting, we're getting there. But we just launched on Amazon. And then um, a CEO from ShopRite Grocery Stores on the East Coast, mm -hmm. his his customers came in and said, Where's Donna Mama's fried chicken and waffles? And he called me and said, We would like to start your grocery store commitment with us and we're going to start you in our grocery stores it. and then you can build from there and I just was like oh my god I was so happy and humble that someone took a chance on us yeah. right well and you know what I think you're a good you're a good gamble because not only do you follow through but you care about other people and I think that um I think that that's worth someone investing in. So yeah. I'm so excited for you. If someone is watching this and they are nervous because yes. they are either about to start their fitness journey, they're right. about to start a business, they don't know what's going on, they're not, they're not sure if they can make it. They're nervous. Right. What would you tell them? Look at oh the camera. Oh my gosh! And tell them. I would just say to trust the process and to face fear. Face it head on. That's what we had to do. We'd never done this before. We researched. We took online courses. I had a mentor. But you got to face the fear and do it anyway. Mm -hmm. And then the third thing I would say is to embrace the becoming. You got to let go of who you were, what you did, if you're trying to embrace change, right? Because now you got to leave your safety belt at home and you got to commit and don't quit. There were times when I was in that kitchen during the summertime, I'd have an ice pack on my knee, one on my back, and I was still cooking some chicken and waffles and pancakes and packaging it up because I knew it was bigger than me. And, yeah. and to see my mom at 81, um, some people said, oh, y'all are too old. I was like, excuse me, your, your comment is irrelevant, what you think, right? I said, the con Colonel, Kentucky Fried Chicken, he didn't start till like 65, I think it was. Yeah. When his like Kentucky that, yeah. Fried Chicken really hit. Yeah. So don't tell me that age is, 
you know, a disability Matters, yeah. because now I am not able to do the activities that I was used to because I got injured. Right. And this has really um, set a whole new standard for me because I was climbing mountains and doing marathons. And this changed because now I couldn't move. Mm -hmm. But I didn't tell myself that every day I got up and I was like, you got this girl, you know, you can do it. And I had to change what I was saying to people and now apply it to myself, right? Yep. Practice what you preach. Yep. But this has been going on for about a year because it was a very interesting kind of um, injury. But I know that I'm going to heal. I know I'm going to be better. I'm going to be dipping it for Jesus with my mama and doing salsa dancing and golfing again. But it all is me keeping a very strong mindset and, and knowing that you train your mind to be stronger than your feelings and emotions. And anytime, like I will get in the dumps sometimes, I may yeah. have a bad day, but I don't stay there long because I change what I'm saying to myself. I'm going, uh-oh, no, 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 no pity party. No, you're not a victim. You get your butt up and you keep moving. You're making me think, I spoke with this one veteran who was just an incredible woman and she was saying, it's okay to feel a certain way. It's okay yes. to feel bad. It's okay to wallow. Just don't stay there. You can't stay there because mm -hmm. this has been going on for a year. And like I said, I'm so used to being active and moving and I had no limitations. And yet I have been helping people become healthier and achieve their goals. But I never saw it from the perspective of having a limitation. Right. And now I see that. So but I'm, you're not letting it stop you. Yeah, like but, I said, you're not you know playing what? that victim. I'm not. But I think God has a greater plan mm -hmm. because I think... I will be able, how do I say, I'll be able to help people at a greater level because of all the pain and all the sacrifice and all the hardship that I experience. because now I can help them because I am them. I was never them. And now I am, and I see it from a different perspective, and I think a little differently now, and I move obviously differently. Mm -hmm. And so... This happening, even though it was so bad and it it hit me like a brick, um, I'm going to use it for the good. I'm going to use it to inspire, you know, and, and help are. people no matter what injury. It doesn't matter if you had a setback. It doesn't matter if, you know, things didn't happen the way you wanted it to happen during the pandemic. You have to pick yourself up. And put on, I don't say big girl panties. I say I put on my Jesus draws. There you go. I like that. <laughs> and, and that's when I'm fighting. Like, yep. I even have a fight name. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I'm, I'm, my my fight, fight name is Little Sugar. Okay. But my nickname is Dynamite. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, whenever I get like a little low, I go to that mountaintop mm -hmm. when I climb the tallest freestanding mountain in the world, Kilimanjaro, yep. 19,340 feet. And it took every bit of my fortitude and my strength and that my mental courage. Capacity. Oh my gosh. Because there were times when we were climbing, we started at, I think, 90 degree weather. But by the time we summit, it was zero minus five wind chill factor. Mm. And I'm saying talking cold. Yeah. And so there took, you had to have a certain um, faith and you had to have a certain strength that said that no matter what I'm facing, because you're in the wilderness, yep. I'm, I got this. I'm going to make this. I'm going to make it to the top because it was whatever, greater than making it to the top. Yeah, well, well, and the top is different for everyone. Oh, yes, it is. Yeah. And I realized that even that, you know, yes, I can brag and say I climb Kilimanjaro, but it wasn't about that. When we came down from that mountain, it took seven days up, two days down, mm. and you're just in the wilderness and all kinds of things happen. <laughs> um, but we did missionary work for seven days, and we're out in the bushes helping kids. They lived in these facilities that looked like huts and no running water, no heat. We raised money here, and we were able to get school supplies and food and clothing and water. That's so special. And that's why. Like, God prepares you for the greater assignments and purpose that and, and plan gives he has you what for you. you can handle there you go and even though you get to the point where i can't handle anymore he's he he has you equipped I'll let you know <laughs> yeah and i just think that he's got something great planned for me <laughs> right now yes, just, yep. just yesterday i'm thinking okay there's different challenges that happen in in getting this business together and then i got kicked off of facebook and instagram because they couldn't authenticate who I was, who I was, oh because goodness. one of my assistants is in the Philippines. So they're getting two yeah. entries into this one account, and they were like, 
what's going on? So what? now <laughs> I'm like, nothing of, stops you. No, nothing. nothing. You never well, give up. <laughs> and speaking of, I mean, unfortunately we are running out of time, yes. but I want people to be able to find out more about you. What's yes. your social media handles, your website, where can people buy okay. uh, your amazing mix? So um, my social handle for Instagram is I am Donna Richardson. And for Twitter, it's Donna Richardson, Facebook, Donna Richardson. And our website is DonnaRichardson.com, but also Mama Laverne's Chicken and Waffles. <laughs> so you can get it, go there. And then also we have um, where you can buy the product on Amazon. And Amazon has been an amazing partner. I just want to give them their props because when you're doing it at home, which I was, that's a lot to take on the shipping, the mailing, and the customer service. Mm -hmm. And now to be able to have a partner who takes care of all that, I had an assembly line. I had families come over with their kids and you stuff and you package and that's what you do because yep. you got to crawl you before you, you walk, you yep. right? Absolutely. And so you go through all that, but then on the, my bigger vision was saying, you're going to have to get a co-packer. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to get a spice company, a packaging company. And that's what we did. So now I have all these partners. So our and first run was yeah. thousands which I couldn't produce in my own yeah. home, but I started there. And I think when you start with humble beginnings, you are so appreciative of whatever, because it, it, it's no like destiny, it's a right. journey. And my, I, I know I talk about my pastor a lot, but he's had so much of an impact on me. But he said, <laughs> being relentless will get you there. Being consistent will keep you there. And being grateful and thankful will bless what's there, will increase what's there. Wow. And so I think about that because this injury surely has humbled me yeah. and not being able to go out and speak to people, it sure did humble me. And even though people go, well, you, you know, you were still doing virtual events. Right. I was, but guess what? I was only speaking. I couldn't move. Right. So you have to like, you know, shut down the negativity and the energy and the vibes that sometimes come. It is sometimes it's not from you, it can be from other people, yeah. but you have to shut that out and you have to be able to hear what you need to hear. Well, what surround God's yourself telling by positivity, you. whether it's with other people or with yourself. And I, I mean, that's a great message for people to take away from today. So yes. Donna, thank you so much thank for joining you. us. Thank you. And, and I think it's I so cool that. that you have the show, right? To yeah. inspire because all of us are agents mm -hmm. to inspire and impact and make a difference in this world. All of us. Yep. I, I, I've and said that's this what before, you're doing, Sarah. <laughs> and congratulations, again, girl. You rock. <laughs> <You're so laughs> Keep sweet. doing it. But I'll say it again. You embody what I really want this show to be about yeah. because you truly have the right, the freedom, and the power to be the change that you want to see in the world. And Donna, you have done that. So thank you so much again. Well, thank Appreciate you. you. Never take it for granted. You get out there and do what you can do to make a difference and make someone else smile, make someone else have joy, happiness, love, whatever it is. It's up to us to be the agents of change and inspiration. I wish I wish I could take this microphone out and just, you know, drop it. So oh God, I hope I didn't ruin something, but <laughs> thank you, Donna. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us. Hopefully uh, you, hopefully I didn't ruin this microphone and you can still hear me talking, but don't forget to follow us on all of your streaming services, of course, your social platforms, and we'll see you next time. You have the right to inspire.